So, today what I would like to do is to go back uh, to the diffusion equation, the one dimensional diffusion equation and introduce you to the idea of first passage times, survival probabilities and so on. So, as to get some feel for what the diffusion equation solutions look like in the presence of boundaries, finite boundaries. Okay. And the first of these problems is uh, something we already mentioned. So, on the x axis you have a diffusing particle satisfying the ordinary diffusion equation. Here is the origin and there is a barrier at the point B and another at say minus B in this case symmetrically placed on either side and this barrier is either reflecting or absorbing as I pointed out. Now, if it is reflecting boundary conditions, so reflecting boundary conditions at x equal to plus or minus B, this implies that the solution to the diffusion equation P and let me call it reflecting just to keep in track keep track of this fact x t is equal to a summation over all integers minus infinity to infinity e to the minus x plus 2 n b the whole square over 4 d t divided by the normalization factor 4 pi d t as usual. Okay. So, this is the function that is the unique solution to the diffusion equation in this region satisfying the boundary condition that there is no flux across this point or that point. So, delta p over delta x vanishes identically at these two points. Okay. On the other hand, if you had absorbing boundary conditions at these points, this implies that p absorbing of x comma t is summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity and then all you have is a minus 1 to the power n over and above the original expression divided by the same normalization. But the fact that you have this minus 1 to the n and you have absorbers here which means that the probability density vanishes at these two points makes a huge difference. These are very different functions although they may look very similar to each other the fact that you have this factor here makes these functions very different. For instance, in this case I am guaranteed that P reflecting of x comma t from minus b to b integrated over dx equal to 1 for all t greater than equal to 0. That is no longer true when you have absorbers at the two ends because it means that the diffusing particle could hit that end point either of the two end points and get absorbed after that the diffusion process comes to a halt hmm? or it could leak through this barrier and get out of the region of interest. In either case this quantity minus b to b dx p absorbing of x comma t is not equal to 1. It starts at 1 at t equal to 0 because my initial condition has always been um, p of x comma 0 is equal to whether it is an absorber or reflector. So, it is ref or equal to delta of x which is also equal to p absorber of x comma 0. So, I start with the particle in the or at the origin and I say I let go and satisfies the diffusion equation. So, the initial condition is exactly the same for both. So, this quantity at x t equal to 0 is obviously just the integral of a delta function that is equal to 1 all right, but because of this factor it decreases as time increases as we will see explicitly in a particular fashion and this is equal to the total survival probability that the particle is still here in this region between minus b and b without having been absorbed and that survival probability let me call it s till time t and this is to indicate where the barriers are given that it started at the origin at t equal to 0. So, let me just call it s of t, but I put in these here to tell me where are the barriers and where did it start. Okay. It obviously depends on where it started. We took a nice symmetric initial condition. Okay. So, this thing here is the survival probability in the region in the closed region. Uh, in, in the open region minus b to b. Okay. So, it stays in the in this interval without hitting the end points. 
Now what do we expect of uh, s of uh, t plus or minus b? So if I plot this as a function of t, if I plot this s here, I expect that t equal to 0 it is of course 1 and then I would expect it to die down as a function of t in some fashion. We would like to know exactly how it dies down. It turns out it dies down exponentially fast and we must see that explicitly. Okay. Now you could also ask what is the probability that this particle hits this boundary or that boundary for the first time at some time interval, time instant t between t and t plus dt for the first time and the moment it hits it, it is absorbed. This is called an exit time or a hitting time or a first passage time, first passage to the plus or mi points plus or minus and what would that be? Well, if I call the first passage time density and let us call it q of t, so it happens between t and t plus dt given that you had barriers at plus minus b and given that you started at 0 exactly as in this case. The question is what is this quantity is equal to and that is of interest because if I find that this quantity is normalized in t between 0 and infinity, its integral must be equal to 1. If I say that absorption is a sure event, this integral must be equal to 1, that is the first point. And the second point is if I find the average value of t with respect to this density, then I have the mean time it takes to hit the barriers at the two ends. Now this thing is very easily computed. This thing here is equal to minus ds over dt of t given 0 because after all you could go back here and write it for small infinitesimal difference delta t and you could ask what is s of t plus delta t, what is the probability that it survives till t plus delta t and you add to that the probability that it is absorbed between t and t plus delta t that is q of t times delta t together they must be equal to s of t because the system survives till time t probability s of t and then it has two possibilities after that either it gets absorbed or it continues and survives. So that immediately tells you that s of t minus s of t plus delta t divided by delta t in the limit is just the q here. So that is why I put a minus sign here. This thing is a decreasing function of t I expect it to be. So it is minus is a positive quantity and that is the first passage time density between these points. We would like to compute this quantity q for this problem. Okay. Now this can be done in a number of ways, there are many ways of doing this as I said, but this is not a very good representation for it because as you can see the t appears in the denominator here and as t increases this denominator makes becomes larger and larger. So these exponentials tend towards 1 e to the 0 which tends towards 1 and then you have a very slow decay due to this guy here and it is not at all clear what is the actual behavior of this quantity as t goes to infinity. This is a very bad representation. Near t equal to 0 it is pretty good because it tells you oh it is singular, it starts with a delta function and then it spreads out but the question is what does it do for very large t, it is not a great thing to do. But we already have a hint on how to change this representation. You see this is a sum over integers in this fashion and now it is clear that if you use the Poisson summation formula, you can try to bring this t in the denominator to the numerator if you wrote this in terms of a Fourier transform. But instead of doing that, let us do this a little more directly. Let us solve this, let us solve the diffusion equation once again in this region. We wrote the solution down using the method of images from the fundamental solution. But instead of doing that, let us start again with the diffusion equation and solve it by the time honored elementary method of separation of variables, it will be the obvious thing to do and let us see what happens then. And the reason I want to do that is because of the following hope, the diffusion equation is first order in time and if I use separation of variables, I would get a first order differential equation with possibly an exponentially decaying solution and once I have an exponentially decaying function of time, I know what it does for large values of t, it just goes to 0. So let us see if that is borne out or not. Let us start again. 
and I am specifically interested in absorbing boundary conditions. So, we will focus on just that. So, I have delta p over delta t equal to d d 2 p over d x 2 and p at x equal to plus or minus b t equal to 0 for all t and the initial condition this is p absorbing. and the initial condition is p absorbing of 0 uh, sorry x comma 0 is delta of x in this case. So, what does one normally do? It say well this p absorbing of x comma t you would assume this to be some uh, t of t function of t alone multiplied by some function capital X of little x alone that is the simple assumption and then this equation would imply that capital X times delta t dt over little dt. So, capital X times dt over little dt equal to d times capital T times d2 capital X over dx2 okay. And then the obvious thing to do is to divide by xt. So, you have a 1 over t and then a d over x this should be equal to that, but this is a function of time alone and that is a function of the little x alone and that is only possible if each side is a constant the same constant. So, let us write that constant out this is equal to minus I want to say minus because I want exponentially decaying solutions you can take any arbitrary constant alpha, but it will turn out to be a negative number. So, let us put that in to start with by saying minus c square some constant. I expect c to be a real number. So, that this will be a damped function and then what does that mean? It says t of t equal to e to the minus c square t times t of 0 that is the straightforward solution to this and what is the solution to this fellow here? it says x double prime plus c squared over d x equal to 0. So, it immediately says x of little x equal to some a cos uh, c squared. So, it is c over root d x plus b sin c times x over root d. That is the solution to the x equation. This is just the harmonic oscillator equation, right. But you see I am starting with a delta function condition which is symmetric in x and the barriers are placed symmetrically on either side. So, the boundary conditions are completely symmetrical it is the same boundary condition at plus b and minus b. The initial condition is symmetric under x to minus x. The boundary conditions are invariant under x going to minus x and the diffusion equation is invariant under x to minus x because it is second order in x. So, I expect the solution to be symmetric as a function of x and the moment I see that this thing goes away by symmetry x to minus x there is no b okay and you have only a cosine which is an even function of x and the next thing to do is to put in what the boundary conditions are and we want p to vanish at the boundaries. So, this implies that cosine of c over root d times b equal to 0 that is the boundary condition whether I put plus b or minus b does not matter it is a cosine and I want this to vanish okay. and what does that imply? It says this thing must be n plus half times pi otherwise its cosine does not vanish right. So, this will immediately imply that c over root d b equal to n plus half pi or c equal to 2 n plus 1 pi root d over 2 where n is an integer okay. 
Now this integer in principle could be plus or minus but the fact is I have taken solu the solution to be cosines and sines so I do not have to go to the negative integers at all. Had I taken exponentials here then of course I would have to keep track of both the positive and negative integers but the moment I say cosine or sine then it does not matter because when I can relate cos n plus half the with a negative n to a positive half odd integer okay. So this immediately implies now that we have our solution. The solution is P absorber of x comma t equal to a summation over n equal to 0 to infinity some coefficients a n which we still have to discover times cosine of uh, C x over root d but we know what C is so it is 2 n plus 1 pi x over 2 b the square root of d cancels because c over root d is sitting here okay. multiplied by exponentials and those are e to the minus c square t times e to the power minus and c squared is 2 n plus 1 whole squared pi squared d t over uh, 4 b square that is it that is the solution okay. Now we still have to find out what it does at x equal at t equal to 0 you still have to put in the initial condition and make sure that you can determine the initial the coefficients okay and that is easily done because all you need and I am not going to do that but all you need for that is to note that the initial condition delta of x we know that delta of x has a Fourier expansion we know that it is 1 over L summation over all n equal to minus infinity to infinity e to the 2 pi n i x over L right. Now put L equal to 2 b and you end up with a 2 b here and a 2 b here so this thing cancels. So we have a representation for the delta function in terms of exponentials right. But now I, I have n equal to 0 upwards so let us take terms here so this is 1 over 2 b I take the n equal to 0 term out plus a summation n equal to 1 to infinity and I have half this plus with the same with the minus there that is equal to the cosine right so this is equal to cos n pi x over b. So use this fact in here use the fact that at t equal to 0 it must reduce to this thing here and compare to write down what the coefficients are it is a simple exercise and the answer turns out to be just a 1 over b like this okay. So verify verify this check this whatever we have now an explicit solution in terms of decaying exponentials out here where n runs over all the integers 0 to infinity out here and it is got the right dimensions the probability density must have 1 over length as the dimension and that indeed it does and this is it this is it. So as you can see from here immediately this quantity actually vanishes as t tends to infinity including the n equal to 0 term that too has a non-zero coefficient exponent up here and therefore it is not surprising that when you integrate this from minus b to plus b the answer is trivial you can write this down trivially it would still decay. So let us write that down let us see what s of uh, t plus or minus b 0 equal to this is equal to integral from minus b to b dx p absorber of x comma t what is that equal to well, that is equal to 1 over b and then let us integrate n equal to 0 to infinity e to the minus 2n plus 1 squared pi squared dt over 4b squared and then I have to integrate this quantity between minus b and plus b right. So that is equal to sin 2n plus 1 pi x 
over 2b from uh, minus b to b and then it is divided by 2n plus 1 pi over 2b and the b cancels and the 2 goes on top. So, let us take out a 2 over pi and write it like this. Now, that is a sign function which is going to change sign from b to minus b and I am going to subtract the value at minus b. So, there is an extra factor of 2 I will make that 4 and it is just the value at plus b. So, the b cancels and you have this which is n plus half pi. Okay. That is sin n pi cos pi over 2 which is 0 plus cos n pi sin pi over 2, sin pi over 2 is 1 and cos n pi is minus to the n. So, this whole thing just that is the exact solution. Okay. So, we have this as I promised the survival probability in this region is a decaying sum of decaying exponentials and the leading term goes like e to the minus pi square dt over 4 b squared and it is add, added to it are even more rapidly decaying exponentials and we have a whole spectrum of relaxation times by which it decays okay. and you are guaranteed this series converges extremely rapidly because you have this e to the minus n squared sitting here definitely it goes to 0 very very rapidly. Now, of course, you can ask is it true that this thing is sure namely that you are definitely going to hit the point or not. Well, what is the uh, answer to that? You are definitely going to hit it if s goes to 0 because first passage to x equal to plus or minus b is a sure event or an event which will occur with probability 1 always provided provided the survival probability goes to 0 as t tends to infinity means sooner or later it is going to be hit right. So, it is a sure event if integral 0 to infinity dt q of t plus minus b 0 is equal to 1 if and only if this is clear because it says this is the probability that absorption occurs between time t and t plus dt. And if you integrate that between 0 to infinity if you sum over all the times and if it is equal to 1 then you know the event is certainly going to occur with probability 1. So, you just need this condition, but if you put that in here if you put this in here then this is the same as saying s of infinity well there is a minus sign. So, it says s of 0 plus minus b 0 minus s of infinity plus minus b 0 equal to 1. That is the same condition all I am doing is integrating with respect to t, but this quantity is 0 start with. So, all you have to ensure is that the survival probability is 1 at t equal to 0. You say you start at t equal to 0 with the particle obviously it survived at t equal to 0. So, you need to put t equal to 0 in this and ensure that you get 1 as the answer. What happens if you put t equal to 0? This goes away this e to the thing and you have this series minus to the n over 2 n plus 1 and what is the value of that series? 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth it is pi over 4 hmm? it is which cancels here and gives you this. So, uh, we know this minus 1 and by the way this is equal to tan inverse of 1 it is just the arc tangent series the Madhava series for the ta arc tangent and its value at pi over 4 is tan inverse 1 is pi over 4. So, indeed this is true. So, we are sure that first passage does occur that is for sure. The next question is all right now that first passage does occur what is the average time 
it takes for this to happen. For that you need to do a little more work. You need to find out what is Q. We have still not found out what is Q from this thing, right. So let us compute the first passage time density itself. And that turns out to be Q of T plus or minus B is 0. This is the derivative minus the derivative of this function with respect to T. So this is equal to 4 over pi summation n equal to 0 to infinity. This thing converges absolutely so we can differentiate inside the integral sign minus 1 to the power n and then e to the minus 2n plus 1 squared pi squared dt over 4b squared over 2n plus 1 times this thing here. So that gives me a 2n plus 1 squared pi squared d over 4 b squared. Right? Unless I have differentiated wrongly. So all you have to do is to differentiate this once and it just brings this factor down and let us uh, get rid of things. So this 4 goes away, there is a pi, so there is a pi d over b squared and then a 2n plus 1 on top and that is it, okay. And we are not overly concerned about the fact that there is a 2n plus 1 sitting here because this thing here is a very strongly damped exponential e to the minus n squared. So whatever power of n appears here is irrelevant. In fact, all moments of this function will exist now, okay. So that is Q and then the next step is to find out what is the mean time it takes. So the average time over all possible diffusion processes, all realizations of this diffusion process that you are going to hit plus or minus b having started at 0. For the first time you are going to hit plus or minus b having started at the origin at 0 and let us call this angular bracket the average over all random box, all diffusion processes. This thing here is equal to an integral from 0 to infinity dt t times q of plus or, uh, of t plus or minus b starting at 0 divided by the normalization which is 0 to infinity dt q of t plus or minus b 0. But this is 1, the denominator is 1. We have normalized the probability because s of 0 was equal to 1. So this is definitely normalized to unity and you have to do this, you have to do this integral. You have to differentiate, you have to put this in and integrate this. So now previously we had e to the minus some a t as the integral. Now you got t e to the minus a t as an integral that also is doable and then you have to do this sum, okay. But you know there is a shortcut to do this business and that is the following. Hmm? Suppose you define, you want to find the moments of this t, suppose you define the Laplace transform with respect to t of this q. So let us define q tilde of s plus or minus b 0 to be the Laplace transform of this q of t plus or minus b 0. And this is equal to integral 0 to infinity dt e to the minus st q of t plus or minus b. This is the Laplace transform of this function. What is the value of this Laplace transform at s equal to 0? We put s equal to 0, you get this integral, but that is the sum over probabilities, that is 1. So if the event is a sure event, the corresponding q must be q tilde must be equal to 0 at s equal, it must be equal to 1 at s equal to 0. And that is easy to check because we already verified that this quantity is 1. So this we know for sure that uh, at s equal to 0 this quantity is 1. Hmm? But we now need this integral for the average. Hmm? What should I do for that integral? I need to bring down a t here. I take a derivative with respect to s of this Laplace transform. That brings down a minus t and then I put s equal to 0. So this goes away. Hmm? So it is obvious that this quantity is also equal to minus 
d q tilde over d s s plus or minus b 0 evaluated at s equal to 0. I am just lazy I could do the integral t to the minus a t, but I want to do this because it is easier to do you can write the answer down immediately. Hmm? Well, we can write down q tilde here without too much ado because each term is like e to the minus a t and what is the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t? 1 over s plus a. So, we have it right there and q tilde of s plus or minus b is 0 equal to pi d over b squared summation n equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n over s plus whatever it is there is a 2n plus 1 sitting outside s plus 2n plus 1 squared pi squared d over 4b squared. And of course, it is not hard to see that again if you put s equal to 0 you are going to get 1 that is very clear because you put s equal to 0 you get again pi over 4 from this series which cancels the 4 over pi and gives you 1. There is no clear. But now you have got to differentiate this with respect to s and then set s equal to 0. So, I differentiate it I am going to get the same thing squared with a minus sign, but that minus is killed against this minus sign and then I set s equal to 0. So, d q tilde over d s minus this whole thing at s equal to 0 is the square of this at s equal to 0. So, it gives me let us write it carefully 2 n plus 1 to the power 4 and then there was a pi squared. So, that gives me a pi cubed in the denominator and then there is a d squared that gives me a d out here and then it gives me a 16 b to the 4. So, there is a b squared and this goes away and this thing here becomes a cube and that is the result. Now, this is not such a trivial series as that, but we have an exact answer. I mean this is exactly equal to t plus or minus b starting at 0, average over all possible random box without any bias of course. Hmm? Now, as expected I already pointed out that this time must be proportional to b squared over d because that is the only time scale in the problem. So, indeed it is proportional sorry there is a b squared over d the d went away there was a d squared in the denominator. So, we got this. So, it is in fact proportional to b squared over d times this series here. Now, we need a little bit of uh, information we need the value of this series this is not so trivial to obtain, but it is doable this series here and it turns out this series is pi cubed over 32. Okay. You are compelled to look at the tables at last, but it is possible to do this by other means as well, but I am not going to waste time doing that here. It is a little tricky because of the cube here had it been a fourth power then we could have used various contour tricks and so on but because it is a cube it is little tricky, but it is known in terms of what are called Bernoulli numbers. So, here we are and this is equal to b square over okay. So, remember that I said that l square over d where over region l is the diffusion time to reach a distance l. Now, what is happened here is exactly that we know that the root mean square displacement will go like 2 d t that is for the displacement as a random variable. On the other hand if the time is a random variable for a fixed distance b on either side of the origin then the time is average time is precisely b squared over 2 d. Okay. So, this ties in with the it is a complementary piece of information to what we had earlier. It ties in with the fact that the lengths the time scale in this problem is indeed b squared over d including this factor 2 turns out that is because of an artifact it is a symmetric symmetrically uh, symmetric initial condition, but in any case this is the exact answer. Okay. 